Adventist archaeologists have been doing work in Jordan for more than 50 years. I've been out there with them for some of those years. And I got an astonishing example about how Christians can be seen, as Abimelech might say. One of our colleagues was from Birzeit University. He was a Palestinian. But he was proud of the difference between himself and his Palestinian colleagues. He felt so sorry for them because they were Muslim, but he's a Christian. And if you saw the pride in his art, in his eyes, in his gesticulations, he feels sorry for them because they have rules that tie them down. But he's a Christian. He can drink and he can party. I don't know how your brothers and sisters, neighbors and associates, your Muslim friends view you. But I think you will agree that Christianity has been dragged to the dogs when somebody is so proud of being a Christian and so sorry for the Muslims because they follow some rules that make sense. While he, the Christian, can carouse and party. They have rules tying them down, but he is free. How do you see yourself? Forget now about the Muslims and the Christians and the Abrahams and the liars. How do you see yourself in a mirror? How do we see ourselves when we are confronted with the truth? If any man, says James, is a hearer and not a doer of the word, he's like somebody who looks at his face in a mirror, he sees the blotches, and he immediately goes away and forgets what he saw in the mirror. I don't know how many Isaacs there are here today who have been looking to their own Abraham, copying him, striving with all their heart to follow his model. Somebody brought them into the faith, and now that person is the greatest thing in their life and estimation, the brightest star in their firm. Abraham was good, folks. But whatever good he was good for, God never chose him to be our Savior. Abraham was good, but he wasn't good enough to save anybody. He had to beg God, just like you and me, to spare the life of somebody he loved. You read the dialogue in Genesis 18, 23 to 33. All that go wrong, come wrong, come wrong, go wrong dialogue is Abraham trying to get God to say, okay, I will let Lot off the hook because Abraham knows Lot is down there and God says we have come to wipe away this place if the reports we have are correct. And Abraham knows that God doesn't hear wrong. Abraham was good, but admiring him too much will give edge to your teeth because Abraham ate sour grapes. This is not a sound exegesis of that verse in Ezekiel, but in a sense, the point is Abraham practices dishonesty. He does it well enough for it to show itself in the next generation, God is not punishing Isaac because Abraham was bad, which is really the context of Ezekiel. But God cannot be happy with Isaac or with Abraham because both of them give the lie to his name. They reduce him to a mockery. And Isaac's problem of admiring Daddy Abe didn't end after 180 years and he closed his eyes and lay down and they put him in a hole. It was still around when Jesus came and it was a problem. Here is Jesus pointing out the problem. Matthew 3, 9, do not suppose you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. Please, do not say that. Luke 3, 8. Bear fruits in keeping with repentance and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham for our... F Jesus' warnings did not work. 
they eventually did tell him so. John 8, 39, Abraham is our father. They never understood what God had in mind when he chose Abraham. And because of that, Jesus had to tell them, you are not Abraham's children. If you were Abraham's children, you would do. If you are, then do the deeds of Abraham. What is the deed of Abraham? Lying to Abimelech? Teaching the wrong thing to the next generation? No, Abraham is the father of all who believe. It is putting your trust in someone outside of and beyond yourself because you all your best deeds. It's, it's a pretty awkward thing. We know it. Isaiah 64, 6. Your righteousnesses are as filthy rags. I, I don't know if I should explain what it really says. But there is a culture in which that particular cloth has a particular significance. It is a rag with semen on it. God didn't call Abraham the father of the faithful so that the faithful would take license and lie. He calls him the father of all who believe because Abraham believed God and he counted it to him for righteousness. The text on salvation by grace is thoroughly conscious of the difference between the reality of human nature and the miracle God does, the miracle that only God can do. You know Ephesians 2, for by grace are ye saved. Well, there are three stages laid out in that chapter. Stage number one, here's how you used to be dead in trespasses and sins, walking according to the world, according to the devil, the prince of the power of the air, according to the spirit that works in disobedient people. You lived among them according to the lusts of the flesh, indulging fleshly desires and thoughts. By nature, we were children of wrath when we were in that stage. Stage two, here's what God has done. What grace has done, verses 4 to 9. God, rich in mercy because of his great love, resurrected us from death together with Christ. And Paul punctuates it with this exclamation, by grace you have been saved. Now he's going to go on with the regular thought and come to the place where he says, by grace you have been saved. But he just gets swept away by it. And before he gets to the time to say it, he shouts out, by grace you have been saved. Then he keeps going on. God has raised us up with him. God has seated us with Christ in the heavenly places. So in the future, he can show the wonder of his grace. In the future, in God's tomorrow, in heaven, in glory, God will be bragging about grace. In heaven, God will brag about grace. That's seven words too. You can memorize that. For by grace you have been saved. Through faith. Not some human invention. Not some mind game. Not some willpower, not some cultural sophistication, not some human enlightenment or humane development, not some psychology, not by good counseling from the gardens or lily. Not anything that comes from you. Grace is the gift of God. Faith is the gift of God. None of them is the result of human power or else people would be bragging in glory and that would be obscene. Do you know how many people I paid off so I could be here now? Do you know how many demons I had to deal with so they would let me pass? Stage number three. Here's your new life. Now, you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. How do we get so confused about Christianity that we end up saying, Now I'm free in Jesus, I can carouse and party. When Jesus raised you up from the dead, he raised you up for good works prepared beforehand, so you would practice them. 
category distinctions, Jew versus Gentile, circumcision versus uncircumcision. I had to do it that way because the time before I said circumcision versus uncircumcision. So I want you to understand that my gesticulations don't mean some are right and some are wrong, some are Jew. So keep it going. Circumcision or uncircumcision. You were lost and hopeless. Your father was good. Abraham was good. But only Jesus saves. Now all God's promises belong to you. A personal Jesus is your personal peace. And the, the Greek, Irene, is translating the Hebrew shalom. Shalom, you know, shin lamed bem. So Jesus is your personal shalom. And shalom doesn't just mean the absence of bullets flying. Shalom means wholeness, togetherness, serenity, self-contentment in the Lord. That's a, that is who Jesus is for you now. Now you're a citizen of heaven and you're a family in God's household built on the foundation of scripture. What the text says is built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets. The apostles is New Testament. Prophets mean the Old Testament. Built on the Bible with Jesus himself being the cornerstone of a dynamic building growing into a holy temple in the Lord. At the same time, each of you is developing as a house where God's Holy Spirit dwells i want to close this thing i think it's time to close i don't know if it's the right time or if i'm thinking right but i don't know if there's somebody here who has a hero who knows that your hero is a flawed hero but you've been looking to your hero and condoning those faults in yourself because well you know she is strong and, and she does that so I don't know how many don't have any hero, but who tell the Lord when he speaks to their conscience or shows them the mirror, oh, yeah, it's all right, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get that taken care of in time. Is there somebody who wants to say, I want you to pray for me so that my ideal will not be Abraham, but Jesus. I understand Abraham was good, but only Jesus saves. If you want me to pray for you so that you can be redirected to Jesus from whoever and whatever may be the distraction, stand up and I'll pray for you. If you want me to pray for you and for your hero so that, you're, so that you can have the courage to go and tell him that you believe the Lord has used him mightily for you, but there is more that the Lord wants both of us to do. God will give you the tact and the grace to say it. Or maybe you know you are the hero. You know people take you as an example. You know you aren't always consistent. You want to apologize and grow. Go and say, you know, we've been friends for a while. And you are very affirming of my friendship. I want to affirm yours in a particular direction. God will tell us how to do it. Lord God of hosts. Master of the universe. Lord of glory. Lord of light. Shine upon us, we pray, so we may see ourselves and be blinded and cast down to the ground and fall flat on our face before you at the cross. Reach down and pick us up and lead us on a walk in newness of life. Thank you for all the Abrahams of the world. And thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus who saves. Thank you for saving us. Thank you in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Abraham was good, but only Jesus saved.
In case you have fallen by the wayside of life, dreams and visions shattered, you're all broken inside. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back together again. Oh, the part of one to put you back together again. In case your situation has been turned upside down, and all that you've accomplished is now on the ground, you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The part wants to put you back together again. Oh, the part wants to put you back together again. You who are broken, stop by the potter's house. You who need mending. Stop by the potter's house. Give him the fragments of your broken life, my friend. The potter wants to put you back together again. Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again. You who are broken, stop by the potter's house. You who need mending, stop by the potter's house. Give him the fragments of your broken life, my friend. The potter wants to put you back together again. Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again. The potter wants to put you back together again. Forgive me, guys. Forgive me. Forgive me. So you thank God for the, the blessing of the thing. Are you blessed? Amen. Abraham was good. Amen. Lord is good of course. Before we have the uh, last prayer, I'd like to announce that um, from tomorrow we we move camp again. Now. Uh, this is state house girls. So, and being state house girls, there are many things <laughs> that happen around state house. St. George's, sorry. St. George's. Well, St. George's, because they could order.